That's what you get for giving out yo-yos during church. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> I'm thinking about what it's like the last three years especially, and uh, have you had moments or times where you just feel really lonely? And you can be in a big group of people and still feel lonely. And you can be by yourself and not feel alone. But I think there's a lot of us that have had times when you, you just wonder if people really listen to us, whether we... People understand us, and sometimes we probably wonder if God is even there. I'm trying to imagine what it was like with Jesus' disciples, because as it got to the end, he started giving them hints that he was not going to be here much longer. And I'm trying to imagine what it was like for the disciples, because they had three years of being so close to Jesus and hearing his word and seeing his healing, and then he started saying that he was not going to be long, much longer. And here's what he says in the gospel lesson for today. When I go, you will not be alone because I will come back to you. And in a little while, the world will see me no more. But God is going to give you a helper who will stay with you forever. And that helper is the spirit. And you know him because the spirit is inside of you. You know, I know that God is always present. And I know that God is always with us. And I know that God lives in the heart and soul of each one of you. And we need to believe this. But sometimes it's hard to believe because maybe we don't feel the power of God's presence. And especially when you say goodbye to somebody in your life who has been your anchor. And I realize that Jesus is not just talking about himself. I realize more and more with the way things are going in the world that Jesus is saying that we, as his followers, have to embody the power of his spirit. Because when we embody that spirit, people can see God at work, and it gives them the strength and the purpose they may not have had. Believing in God comes alive when we see God's spirit in action. So Jesus says to the disciples, I will be leaving you soon, but you are now the ones who embody my spirit. So don't bicker. Don't create little groups that compete with each other. Don't wear fancy robes. Don't try to keep people outside the temple because there's only one rule that matters, and that is love one another as I have loved you. And treat others as you would have them treat you. When I think about being alone, I talked Thursday night at church about a funeral I had just before I got to church that night. And it was a funeral for a 44-year-old single mom who left behind two daughters, ages 12 and 14. And I got to the funeral home, and I had talked to a couple of the friends, but I had never met the family. And I think I mentioned it on Facebook that the two daughters came up to me and said, are you the pastor? And I said, yes. And they said, we would like to speak tonight. And I said, please do. And those two girls, the way they talked about their mom, that she gave them life and she gave them purpose and she was their anchor. And afterwards I told them how inspiring they were. But I realized at their age, with having their mom gone, they're going to need people around them to embody the spirit of Jesus and God's spirit. And you know something? That's where people like us come in. Because you can't just leave it to the family. Because there isn't much family. That somehow, some way, they have to know there are people like us that will hold them up in their loneliness and in their loss. I even think of the lady who's got the love bucket today, Gina. She was only 60 years old and doesn't have any money, and she leaves behind a 20-year-old son. And somehow, some way, as her son goes through life, he needs to find people who embody the spirit of this gentle carpenter that we talk about every single Sunday. And that's where we come in, because people need to know that in their loss, 
they are not alone. I often, uh, I talk about Danny a lot, and he comes to the late service. And Danny was only supposed to live about a year. Well, two weeks ago, he had his 65th birthday. And Danny is severely disabled, and he can't speak. And you never know what's going on inside of him. And so he's in a rehab center now because he had some surgery after a fall, and he was having a tough day. You know, I walked in the room, and I could see it in his face. And so we're sitting there, and he sees my little brown communion kit, and he points to it. And I open the kit, and I took out a wafer, and he gets all excited. And then I took out a little cup, which we used for the wine. And then he gave his church sign. Because in Danny's world, it was now time for church. And he was not alone. And I don't know what he was thinking. I don't know what he was saying. But in those few moments, he felt like he was somebody. And then I thought of those words. When I go, Danny, you will not be left alone. And I haven't been there for a couple of days. And he's probably sitting there because, you know, that was nice of you to say, Don, but war are you? <laughs> but we will be back. But see, that's our calling. In your life, in my life, in your journey out the door today on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday, whatever we can do in little acts of kindness to embody the spirit of Jesus, that's what Jesus calls us to do. And all the paraphernalia and the rules and the regulations and all that kind of stuff, that really doesn't matter. What matters is what's inside each one of us. I think of the psalm today, the first lesson Dominic read, where the question is, who can enter God's temple? And what does God say? Fling wide the doors, open the gates, and a great king is going to come in. And sometimes for somebody who feels alone, you may be that great king, as humble and as imperfect as we are. Because when you open the door to somebody's heart and embody the spirit of that gentle carpenter, that's where it really makes a difference. I was, uh, <laughs> sometimes when somebody feels alone, we are that person. And so this morning, I saw the sunrise across LaGrange Road, and I realized the most important message is the sun that rises inside the heart and soul of each one of you and each one of us. That's the gift. Amen. If you're able to, please rise for the creed, and then we're going to have a song by the choir.